in aerospace and defense systems. Uh, Mark Kinnersley will be speaking to us. Uh, Mark, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I think I can expand a bit more on the advanced reentry vehicle uh, during my presentation. Uh, very much appreciate uh, having the opportunity to address this committee uh, for the review of US, U.S. human spaceflight plans. It's a privilege. Uh, it's, um, EADIS is very much encouraged by the serious interest shown by this committee in administration. If you could get to the next chart, please. Uh, in expanding U.S.-European cooperative partnerships in this field. As your charter clearly alludes, the ability to develop and sustain a robust U.S. human spaceflight program requires leveraging all alternatives available that can provide efficiencies towards affordability, risk, and schedule. We at EADS Astrium are confident we can provide a great benefit to NASA and to the U.S. taxpayer by undertaking the following specific points which are con which are contained at the end of this presentation, but I'll repeat them now. The automated transfer vehicle, EADS Astrium can offer additional ATV mission services to supply ISS in cooperation with the U.S. industry. In particular, ATV can be specifically used to plug the potential logistics gap to the ISS after shuttle retirement. It's point one. Industrialization. EADIS Astrium's expertise gained over the last few years as the industrial operator for Europe's ISS activities could further enable international operational programs to achieve reliable yet cost-efficient industrial services. We operate the ISS on behalf for ESA. In, uh, I'm talking about the Columbus part, not the whole part. Um, that would be good. But in future exploration programs, EADS could provide significant key building blocks in a joint international human and robotic space exploration scenario. I think we have many capabilities, which I will show you in the next charts. Uh, EADS Astrium, as a multinational company that lives and breathes international programs, is convinced that partnership is truly the best way forward for both the US and Europe to realize their respective goals. Uh, we've been working together for 30 years and I have no reason to doubt a successful partnership in the next 30 years. Next chart, please. I had trouble fitting a lot of these photos onto a PowerPoint presentation. Excuse me for the small writing. Um, at the end of the presentation, there is a fuller description of all these different, uh, different products that we have from EADS Astrium. I'm just going to go through it very briefly due to time limitations. We have here uh, developed the Columbus Orbital Facility, which you can see in the top left-hand corner. Uh, this was done under a firm fixed-price contract to European Space Agency, you might add. Uh, the Ariane 5 launch uh, production development uh, with a prime contract of Ariane 5, and uh, we have delivered on time and on quality to Ariane Space to do their seven launches per year. The autom automated transfer vehicle, uh, which we, ma uh, which we uh, produce now in Bremen, uh, the Johannes Kepler is well underway to being uh, ready for the 2010 launch. Uh, we manage the European contribution to the ISS as the industrial operator, uh, and uh, we've uh, also performed atmospheric reentry, descent, and landing. We've led a lot of the ESA interplanetary missions like Mars Express and Venus Express. And in the future, we're looking at developing the ATV further, what we call ATV evolution or the advanced reentry vehicle. Uh, this will initially replace the integrated cargo carrier with an Apollo-shaped capsule, uh, which will allow um, cargo to be downloaded from the ISS initially just for cargo. And eventually, this could eventually be used as uh, a human-rated vehicle. Uh, we have got a study from uh, ESA, which we have just uh, started, uh, which we hope to answer a lot of these questions about um, exactly what the vehicle is going to look like, the precise definition, and also uh, the potential questions on uh, human rating of Ariane 5. 
soft and precision landing and extended mobility in the surface of the moon. We're investing a lot of money in that. We've also started a, uh, an ESA study on that. Uh, in fact, uh, we've also got a study from the DLR to do a, an earthbound demonstrator test for soft and precision landing. Next chart, please. We're very extremely, um, as I said before, we're extremely uh, experienced in partnerships with NASA and US. Uh, <coughs> we have um, subsidiaries over here. Uh, we can be uh, counted as reliable and trustworthy. Uh, we've worked with the US on the Space Lab missions, I think, if I remember correctly, 22 uh, since 1983. And uh, we are now um, introducing ATV as a regular operational vehicle. It's now operational. Next chart, please. We really want to really reap the benefits of the ISS investment, and this means um, it's time now to realize the fruits of our joint labors and use this rather unique facility. In 2008, European theory became reality. It was a great year for, for Europe in this field. With both the launch and successful commissioning of the Columbus Orbital Facility, and the successful maiden voyage of the ATV. Um, Europe arguably became of age in this uh, human spaceflight in this year. This brings confidence to prospective uh, partners, especially when you consider the vehicle. I haven't got a diagram here showing the sizes, but it's the size of a London double-decker bus. I'm British, so I'm going to use the double-decker bus analogy. Successfully managed to formation fly and dock inch perfect. Notice against the use of inches, I'm British again. Uh, with platform traveling at uh, 17,000 miles an hour. So I just want to make the point, this thing is flown, it's proven, it's available. And a capacity over seven tons. And it's soon to be one of only a handful of operational vehicles available for logistics. So plainly spoken, ATV is available and can, ex can expand its already major role in ISS logistics supply until a new US system comes online and could potentially even be flown on US launches. Uh, we've done some preliminary studies on that, and this could be compatible. In addition, an e evolution of ATV towards a download capability with the development of ESA's advanced return vehicle could ease a strain on download logistics. Additional partner capabilities, as made uh, before the point, make the system more robust. We also think we can help with the utilization because of our experience in uh, payload um, pr production and management there. And last but not least, uh, EADS will fully support efforts to have the ISS lifetime extended as far as possible. Next chart, please. <coughs> the US should also consider leveraging European capabilities, other capabilities, uh, an international space exploration initiative will become more robust and vigorous through contributions of the partners. EADIS Astrium's developments within ESA-sponsored project um, to land soft and precisely on the moon, we started a feasibility study on that, could perhaps lead to a European automated cargo lander for the moon, launch an Ariane 5, which could bring nearly two tons of uh, usable payload mass to the surface of the moon. And this would then um, spread uh, the burden and share the costs or a return to the moon, for example. Additional key building blocks could be used the ATV uh, to based on uh, the rendezvous capability of ATV for other aspects, such as rendezvous techniques for sample return or for approaching near-Earth objects, for instance. Um, and last but not least, I'd like to just stress that uh, Astrium has been operating the ISS, the European part of the ISS, on behalf of the European Space Agency, and I think we can bring a lot of lessons learned into this to show how we have industrialized this and run a European uh, team of uh, industry there to operate the um, European part of the ISS in a reliable yet cost-efficient manner. Next chart, please. Again, to summarize the conclusions I made at the, at the beginning, and uh, please, there's some more charts at the end if you need more information on uh, some of the other aspects. Uh, EADS Astrum can offer additional ATV mission services to supply ISS in cooperation with UN's industry. Industrialization, we think we can bring a lot of lessons learned there from our side to industrialize this, to, to save uh, taxpayers money and to provide reliable yet cost-effective efficient services. And uh, for future explanation scenarios, 
we have a lot of capabilities uh, which could provide ki significant key building blocks to a joint international human and robotic space exploration scenario. I'd like to thank uh, very much for your time to the committee and to the audience and uh, for your attention. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your comments. And uh, we do have time for a couple of questions. Uh, Wanda? Good morning, and thank you very much uh, for sharing your, your tremendous track record uh, for EADS in support of the uh, European operations. Uh, my question is, we talked about the benefit of leveraging the, the partnership for ISS. Uh, my question is to ask you to speculate for, you know, sort of 30 years beyond that, you know, what would be the vision for a successful uh, partnership relationship? What are the things that you think uh, would make that attractive? Um, uh, certainly for your organization and, and maybe for um, the European partnership. <coughs> um, specifically, if you could address uh, whether you've given thought to operations at Mars or uh, NEOs and uh, what would be some of the challenges there. Okay, I've just got to make plain that I'm speaking for EADS Astrium and not for the European Space Agency for Euro uh, European government policy, so I have to be rather a little bit careful on that because this has to be decided obviously by the um, the, the government and by ESA. Um, having said that, yes, um, we've um, actually been working very closely with NASA and uh, my team, especially in the advanced projects area, have been working in an architecture study uh, with ESA. Uh, these results are available on the internet, actually. Um, they were presented in Frascati last year, so um, I would certainly direct you towards um, ESA. I think we um, uh, undertook a lot of those studies, probably 50% or something like that and uh, the various aspects of the whole architecture, including Moon, Mars, Leo, et cetera, was exhaustively studied there. And uh, in fact, we had uh, US industry participate in one of the studies with us as a consultant. So we are actively looking at that. Um, I would just suggest you go to the website. I can give you that okay. later. No, no particular benefit uh, one way or the other from an industrial operator perspective? I think, um, you know, we've, we've just uh, started this industrial operator uh, aspect for the, the, the Columbus uh, part, and I think uh, we've learned a lot of lessons at the moment, and I'm, I'm sure, um, sure we can share that um, further. If there's further questions, then we can arrange um, certainly meetings about that. But I certainly think this is the way to go. It's certainly with Ariane as well. We've industrialized that a lot um, as a prime contractor, and I think this is certainly a way to go in terms of achieving great efficiency. Great. Thanks very much, Mark. Well, yeah. Uh, I'll be careful to phrase this as a technical question so that it doesn't uh, get into the questions of ESA policy. There's a lot of possible exploration architectures in which you could do a lot more exploration earlier if you had a very capable storable propellant Earth return stage that you could, you know, send things to places in the solar system and use this Earth return stage to get them back again. Uh, uh, it has struck me that you could derive something like that from the industrial infrastructure of the ATV in a relatively straightforward manner. Does that make sense to you? Y yes, definitely, yes. You've been reading my s stuff. No, we, we may make a lot of uh, thoughts about that. Uh, that's what my team does every day. Um, ATV is a great vehicle, um, and I think we can certainly base uh, things on that, definitely. If you have studies or papers on that that you'd like to share with us, I think that would be welcome. I will certainly go back and uh, do that. Are there any other questions for the panel? I have one. Please, Bo. Thank you for your comments. <coughs> I have a question. Can you, can you envision any single country undertaking in not too distant future a mission to Mars with humans? And if you think it has to be an international affair, which country should lead? Uh, on, a, on a personal question, a personal <laughs> basis, um, I think um, clearly the U.S. is the leader in human spaceflight um, within the world. I mean, I've worked a lot in Russia and have a lot of respect for other countries' capabilities. I do think uh, our Mars, a human mission to Mars, would certainly would benefit from international cooperation. And I think uh, clearly the U.S. is as a leader in that, for my for my opinion. Sally, anything from you? Uh, yes, I do have uh, one technical question that regards the ATV as a, a cargo resupply for ISS. I recognize 
that there are five additional launches planned of, of ATV, and I wonder what the capability would be to add additional launches. In other words, what's the, what's the production capability of, of ATV? Are we, are we uh, restricted to those five, or is there uh, additional opportunity for, for further flights? Right. Uh, thank you for the question. I thought that might come up. Um, yes, I mean, we, we currently have a, um, a production uh, line set up in Bremen, um, and the lead time, as Jean-Yves Legard mentioned, is 36 months for an ATV. So if you would like one, um, say, in 2011 or whatever, you've got to act pretty quickly. So 2011 is probably cutting it fine. But um, certainly, yes, we think we have the flexibility to provide more ATVs. Um, and certainly we, we plan on doing that in the future because if the ISS is extended, we will need uh, more ATV emissions anyway to contribute to European compensation operating costs. So I think there's flexibility certainly to produce more ATVs. <coughs> Quick follow-up. At what rate? Okay. Um, what rate? Um, again, it depends on how you set up the production facility because we have optimized it for the current um, setup as it is, which we're doing one per year. But certainly, um, I'm sure we could in accelerate that rate, but uh, this has to be investigated. Well, again, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.